hey guys what's up so i hope you have watched the dpsp part 4.1 and 4.2 where we dealt with what are dpsp where they do they originate from what is the evolution of dpsp what are the differences between fundamental right and dpsp what are the sanctions behind dpsp how do they have evolved what is the relationship between fundamental rights and directive principles then we dealt with 24 25th 44th and 42nd amendment of the constitution then various cases like champakam dorayajan cases of 1951 golaknath case of 1967 case anand bharati case of 1973 and 1980 case of minerva mills so before that i have already made 10 videos on polity which deals with the uh, schedule part 1 part 2 and part 3 of indian constitution along with that it also deals with schedules and introduction plus preamble so i hope you have watched all those 10 videos before you come here if not please go and in the description below you'll find the playlist uh, just click on that playlist and you are good to go so anyway moving forward uh, so you have lots of requests like rc and uh, answer writing and notes making plus economics plus geography so whichever one you want me to make do let me know uh, please comment below the video on the youtube or on the facebook page this is the facebook page and i hope uh, i'll be able to see them and make them for you please spread the word as much as you can of this education revolution so now we will deal with the actual classification of directive principles so obviously there is absolutely no official classification in the constitution i've read the constitution thrice and i have never seen any classification of dpsp but you most of the textbooks especially in lakshmi kant you will find and in even in subhash kashyap to a certain extent not that much uh, in other textbooks so these will categorize into three categories this is done for academic convenience so one is the socialist which deals with the socialist principles just try to remember which uh, more focuses on equality then gandhian principle just remember six words i'll tell you these six words are panchayat plus cottage industry plus alcohol plus cattle plus weaker section and finally the village so these are the basically keywords of gandhi and dpsp and then there are liberal intellectual principles borrowed mostly from western liberal societies earlier but now it's a lot of mix so anyway moving forward we deal with the socialist principles first so obviously it will deal with the preamble of india the justice social economic political establishment of social order then welfare state minimum inequalities in income this video most of the time you will feel like boring but it is very very critical बिकॉज ये क्वेश्चन नहीं आएगा कि विच इज़ द फोर्टी फर्स्ट और विच इज़ द फोर्टी सेकेंड और विच इज़ फोर्टी थर्ड बट दे विल डेफिनेटली आस्क विच ऑफ दैम इज सोशलिस्ट विच ऑफ दैम इज गांधी एन विच ऑफ दैम इज वेस्टर्न लिबरल एक्सेट्रा सो यू नीड टू हैव अ फेयर बिट ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग बिफोर यू कैन अटैम्प्ट दैन थर्टी नाइन ए इज सोशल लीगल जस्टिस प्लस फ्री लीगल एड टू द पुअर दैन फोर्टी वन इज राइट टू एजुकेशन राइट टू वर्क राइट टू पब्लिक असिस्टेंस एक्सेट्रा then 42 deals with humane condition for work and maternity relief very 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 important then 43 is living wage and having decent standard of life 43a it was inserted by 42nd constitutional amendment act and it deals with the formation of participation of workers in the management and finally article 47 it deals with nutrition and public health so these are the socialist principles as you can see 38 39 41 42 43, 43 and 47 I have missed a very very important article called 39. I have included 39A. That is different. Okay, so this is 39A. So that means Article 39 sub clause A. But 39A means Article 39A. It has nothing to do with 39. So this is how Constitution is written. So now we will deal with Article 39. Please put a star mark on it. This is the most critical, and especially these point B and point C. So point A deals with the adequate measure of livelihood. Point P deals with equitable distribution of material resources. Try to relate them to socialist principles again and again, focusing on equality and focusing on decreasing the concentration of wealth, decreasing concentration of factor of production. Go to Karl Marx theory, and you will be able to figure out whether it's a socialist principle or not. Then finally, prevention of concentration of wealth and means of production. So Article thirty nine B and C. This is a historic fight between thirty nine B and C and fourteen and nineteen. Because thirty one was later removed by nineteen seventy eight forty fourth Constitutional Amendment Act removed Article thirty one which was right of property. So till now thirty nine B and C prevails over fourteen and nineteen. Then there is equal pay for equal work for men and women. This is implemented, and 
preservation of health etc and opportunities for healthy development of children this is also introduced by 42nd constitutional amendment act of 1976 so socialist principles are over just try to remember you don't need to remember each and every article but try to know that which article deals with socialist principles which of them is socialist principles or not it will help in mcq as well as in essay writing then you have gandhian director principles so i have already told you the six keywords uh, village panchayat cottage industry Uh, promotion of weaker section preven uh, prevention of alcohol and intoxicating drugs prohibiting cattle slaughter now the sixth one is introduced by 43b that is the 97th constitutional amendment act 2011 so it deals with the cooperative societies their management democratic formation voluntary formation etc democratic functioning professional management etc etc it also deals with your fundamental right of formation of cooperative so these are the six gandhian dpsp extremely critical just remember these six words panchayat cottage weaker section cooperatives alcohol and cattle slaughter wherever you see this it's a gandhian dpsp so moving forward now so again i have told you this is how you remember you don't actually remember the entire article i have read it thrice the entire constitution never ever i have ever remembered the entire line by line thing but i just remember the key terms or keywords so it is alcohol cow cooperative cottage village or supri this is case the schedule cast that is his paper was harijan for the dalit upliftment so just try to relate try to do what he have done things and you will automatically come to know what are the gandhian dpsp then you have the liberal intellectual principles and obviously uniform civil code early childhood care and education this was earlier uh within 10 years of the constitution it said that within 10 years of the constitution you need to provide them education up to 14 years and it took us 50 years to do that because of the lack of resources so it was done by 86th constitutional amendment act where early childhood care and education was added less than 6 years of age because 6 to 14 is now fundamental right under article 21a it was also done by 86th constitutional and even part 4a that is fundamental duties was amended by 86th constitutional amendment act so now article 48 it deals with modernizing agriculture and animal husbandry 48a it was added by 42nd constitutional amendment act environment related 49 is national monuments 50 is separating judiciary from executive and public life for this we have crpc of 1973 which uh, gives the judicial power to judiciary earlier collectors uh, used to uh, have these judicial powers along with being the executive in the district level article 51 it deals with international peace and security so these were the liberal intellectual principles or lips so try to remember them as much as you can and it will definitely help you in solving various mcqs as well as writing good answers so we deal with international principles here uh, under article 51 it deals with promotion of international peace so this is one of the five conditions where indian parliament can legislate on state list is that absolutely understood so this is one of the five conditions uh, when the matter deals with international peace or giving effect to international treaty you can do that then just an honorable relations with the states then international law and treaty obligations and finally dispute settlement through arbitration moving forward what are the most important dsp by this discussion you might be knowing till now which is the most important directive principles obviously the answer is article 39b and c because it gives a whole hell lot of power to parliament to amend the constitution and to implement various schemes so moving forward now there are three directives which are outside the part 4 again they are also non justiciable non enforceable in court of law uh the article 350a deals with instruction in mother tongue so most of the states you will see if they have a different mother tongue than hindi or english so they will have a vernacular system in primary and then uh, the tri language formula so the 351 deals with promotion and development of hindi language so we have official language department and government and finally the article 355 the claims of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe people to the services then there are certain directive principles which are added after the amendment of the constitution in this case it can be done only under article 368 where you need the approval of two third member of the present as well as voting so let's say in rajya sabha 100 members are there so you need approval of 67 members let's say in lok sabha 300 members are there so in that case you will need approval of how many 200 people so is that absolutely understood it is not the total strength but just the members present and voting 
so 42nd constitutional amendment act added 439f that is healthy development of the children then free legal aid under 39a then improvement of worker participation under 43a in the management of industry and finally environmental protection under 48a this is slightly boring but it can ask uh, certain questions plus it will broaden your horizon that uh, constitution is a living document and a portion as static as dpsp also has undergone lot of changes then 44th constitutional amendment act so article 38 sub clause 2 which minimizes inequalities in job income etc then 86th constitutional amendment act of 2002 uh, it deals with early childhood care and less than 6 years of age so it is under article 45 earlier it was providing of education within 10 years of constitution up to 14 years of age but since 6 to 14 years is now covered under right to education after it was made a fundamental right just beyond right to life under article 21a so that is why this age is reduced to less than 6 early child care and education finally one of the latest amendment is the 97th amendment and total 99 are there and cooperative societies under article 43b have been formed so now what is the criticism so obviously a lot of criticism is there so they say that these are non-justiciable some say it is pious superfluities pious aspirations some say it is just like a check on a bank which will be cash over when there is enough cash at the bank then it's like new year resolution you just break it on 2nd january then some say it is a dustbin of sentiment some say these are moral principles these are extreme critics on the extreme end some say some of them are not practical some say they are foreign in nature you have adopted it from irish constitution some say it is against the principle of state sovereignty many of them say it is illogically arranged for example scientific principles like protection of environment will be added with religious and sentimental similarly ultra important like 39 b and c will be added with very very less important which are relatively insignificant so this arrangement is absolutely absurd according to most of the critiques then there is absolutely no mention of methods to implement they have just said that you need to implement but there is absolutely no mention of way time resources is required of how to implement them then they are extremely conservative and they are outdated they might be good for 1950s india but uh, do they hold the relevance in 2015 also then there is a lot of constitutional conflict uh, arisen because of dpsp as you have already seen a lot of fight going on uh, especially it happened between president and prime minister also governor and chief minister center and state etc 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 so these are the major criticism of directive principles so what is the importance of dpsp we have seen the criticism we have seen a lot of criticism of dpsp but let's see now the what is the importance as i have already emphasized these are the real directives for the state these principles guide they lay the foundation of economic democracy and establish welfare state which is very very important in today's liberalized privatized globalized urbanized and educated society everyone wants a share in the pie so you need to develop welfare state similarly there is absolutely fundamental in governance of the country and they are not contradictory to fundamental rights there is theory of harmonization and they supplement them they are guiding principles for courts also they bring stability and continuity in state policies even election after election parties keep on changing but their policies more or less revolve around the similar issues then there is a lot of educative value of directive principles this cannot be neglected then if the government do not do anything they are answerable to people in next general election so there is no legal section granted but there is absolute political sanction so there are positive obligation for the state they have to do something for their implementation otherwise they might not get re-elected so they are not enforceable in a court of law but they are enforceable in court of people so they have not been given legal enforceability just not because they are inferior to anything but they need resources for their execution they need time for their execution they need the right environment for their execution they need the right kind of uh, education among the people they need the right kind of awareness level among the people for them to be implemented then they facilitate stability and continuity in nation's policy as i have already told and most important reason the framework which is created for the functioning of uh, both uh, for the LEG functioning that is legislative executive judiciary functioning as well as enjoyment of fundamental rights for citizens this is the most important line just see this they creates a background and political democracy do not hold any meaning without economic democracy as dr b r ambedkar also said that we will step into a nation where politically we are equal one met one man one vote but socially and economically we are not at all equal so please focus on this line political democracy do not and i repeat 
political democracy without economic democracy is no meaning so they also act as a lighthouse which is constantly reminding the government of the day it's responsible of taking the country towards welfare goal they are the testing grounds they are the background they are the framework they are the standard against which they are the gold standard against which the performance of the government is judged extremely extremely critical they help in deciding the legal validity they act as the beacon lights to the courts they know that this is this can be the spirit of the constitution something like that just imagine this is an example most basic right of any human being is not to be hungry so freedom from hunger is possible let's say right to food act is there now in india so it can be extended only through implementation of dpsp so unless dpsp are properly implemented there is absolutely nothing citizen can do to enjoy their fundamental rights and finally it amplifies and reinforces the preamble of the constitution so how they are implemented so implementation of dpsp is done through various schemes i'll just go through them example land reform act banking policy minimum wages has been fixed in more all the states and there are lots of welfare schemes for the weaker section nuclear disarmament treaty panchayati raj equal remuneration act consumer protection act then right to education then we similarly to protect the environment uh, as you have seen the 42nd constitutional amendment act added this as well as it is our fundamental duty also so we have environmental protection act of 1970s then we have mg and rgs of 2005 then cow slaughter prohibition act in various states then for maternity benefit we have jsy jssk that is they are conditional cash benefit transfer jannani suraksha yojana and jannani shishu suraksha karyakram then this is one of the most important feature earlier the district magistrate and sub divisional magistrate they were collector also and they used to be executive as well as judiciary but now there is lot of separation of judiciary from executive in public life and finally there is old age pension schemes in most of the states where more than 65 year old are given certain pensions so this was the end of directive principles so do let me know which other video you want me to make i am thinking of making on rc so if you agree let me know otherwise if any other do let me know that also so this is the youtube channel and academy do share the word as much as you can do spread the word about us do help us in creating this revolution please help those who cannot afford coaching you might be well off but please uh, think of others also and this is the twitter handle at roman sen you can ask your queries here and this is the facebook page uh, thank you for watching the video have an awesome day